What is happening? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this roll around cart that powers these two propane tiki torches that also features a flip up lid that houses a cooler to keep your brews cold. It also houses your propane tank and one of the best features is LED lights. Oh, and don't forget the fire. And you guys are gonna get a chance to win this because we're gonna auction it off on eBay. We're gonna give the money to Feeding America. Rick from EasyFireBits.com is gonna put in an extra $500 to sweeten the pot. Also, maybe I'll tell you where the fuck I've been for the past two and a half months. Let's make something cool. So Rick from easyfirepits.com came to me several months ago with this great idea to not only make a completely original project, but to auction it off afterwards and donate the proceeds to a charity of my choosing. So Rick would provide me with the basic idea and the fire feature hardware, uh, but I had to figure out the rest. So I made a quick rendering from Google SketchUp and we went from there. And since I have a thing for pallet wood, of course we made it out of pallets. Here's a quick tip if you're looking to age a stockpile of pallets. What I do if I want to dramatically age some pallets, I lay them horizontally. If you're looking to do some moderate aging, then just lay those guys vertical. If you wanna do some serious aging and have some serious decay, then just live in Michigan. I love pallet wood. <sighs> now, before we get any further, I just want to apologize profusely for disappearing for about, well, about three months now. With going on and being in season, work has been super crazy for me, which leaves me very little time to work on my videos. Also, this video has been a beast, and this project has thrown curveballs at me at every step of the way. I also had to learn how to use my new big boy camera, the Canon EOS R. I'll link it down below. It took me so long to make this video and to complete this project that you can actually watch my beard grow as the video progresses. But to make up for it, I'm gonna throw this in with the auction. I'm just kidding. You can't have this, she's mine. This is Maisie, she's three months old and she's a Siberian Husky. She looks real cute now, but she's a troublemaker. Yes, you're a troublemaker, aren't you? Aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're mine. Nobody can have you, that's right. Oh, back to the project. All right, we're gonna make four of these panels. And it's just a simple frame with butt joints that are joined together with pocket screw joinery. The styles are 31 and a quarter inches long and the rails are 14 and a half inches. All four sides are just gonna be a simple frame and we're gonna join these guys together with uh, the highly underestimated uh, pocket hole joinery. I like using the, the Craig jig. Um, <laughs> Craig Jig, if you guys are watching, you sponsor me anytime you want, all right? But it's very simple. We just drill some holes on the end of our rails on the back, and then we butt join them up against the styles, and we screw them in. And to make the joint even stronger, I like to glue in between the joints before I screw them together.
I've cut some corrugated metal at 30 inches by 18 and a quarter inches. I simply screwed the corrugated metal on the back with a number eight self-drilling screws at three quarter inch long. We'll put our extra touches in these later. So the base was fairly simple. It was five planks at five and a quarter by 24 inches long. And they were joined together by two planks at 20 inches long. When I position my casters, I want to do it in such a way that it doesn't run into this skirt that I'm going to wrap around the perimeter. So I want to make sure that it doesn't drag in this position or in this position. This is why you always keep parts from old projects. The skirt consisted of four strips cut at three inches by 21 and a half inches long. Now, I told you that this project was not without its complications, and the first screw up I had was over a simple mismeasurement, which really threw a wrench in my plans. What? This is why you measure twice, so that way you only swear once. This is not only supposed to be flush with the panel, but it's supposed to go below just about one inch. Measured wrong somewhere. <laughs> this is why dry fitting your parts is an extremely crucial step. So this is the best part about the creative process is the oh shit. I mismeasured about three and a half inches. I'm not gonna tell you how because that's none of your business, but I've gotta figure out a way around that creatively to try to make it look like I meant to do it the whole time. All right, I think I figured out a creative yet simple solution to our height problem. I just ripped a one by at five inches, so everything's raised five inches off. That gives us plenty of room to slide the propane tank in and hook up the hoses and gives us plenty of room between the tank and the cooler. I just simply attached it with pocket hole joinery and glue. And for added strength and stability, I anchored it down with some hurricane type straps. And now all we have to do is run kind of a, a base molding around the perimeter to hide the uh, mistake, um, hide the happy little accident and uh, make it look like we uh, meant to do it that way the whole time because uh, we did. The other great thing about this project was the collaboration of so many different ideas from so many different people. A great example of this is my very best friend, Jordan. You know him from the New Creep video. Link above. He had an idea to add a drain for the cooler. He let me know that if I was going to have a cooler inside the cabinet, that I was gonna have to figure out a way to bail out the water without having to take the heavy cooler out first. All right, now we wanna start on designing this shelf to separate the tank from the cooler. Now we've gotta design around a couple of things. So for instance, the first thing, I want there to be some easy access to this drain plug so that when the water drains out, it's gonna go into a funnel, down a tube, and out the bottom. Also, we need to design around the corrugated metal panels 
as well as give some space for the LED lights that are gonna shine through the plexiglass panels that I'm gonna put in. I'm gonna start working on the shelf by cutting these cutouts that are meant to make room for both the corrugated metal and the lights. I'm gonna start off by drilling some three quarter inch holes with a Fostner bit to uh, give it a nice subtle curve in the corners. And then I'll just finish it off with a jigsaw. All right, we've got our over-engineered shelf. I uh, did some inch and a half cutouts. I've left about an inch and a half and two and a half inches on this foot here to connect to the sides. Now we just gotta figure out how to place our funnel to make the drain in the cooler. But once we get that positioned correctly, we just cut it out and then place the funnel. To hang the door, I just kept it simple with some non-mortise hinges. And I cannot tell you how extremely helpful it is to pre-drill before you screw the hinges in place. The reason why I am so overly happy after hanging this door is that I never get to hang a door and not have to make several adjustments before I get it right. And somehow I got away with the door opening and closing perfectly with perfect gaps the first time. <laughs> I went with a simple chest latch to hold the door closed and to stick with the old rustic theme, I went with a oil rub bronze finish. Now we're gonna work on the top and I'm gonna construct this with miter joint instead of butt joints. Uh, that way we can hide these clean edges. I wanna stick with these rough old weathered edges. So uh, using the miter joint, with pocket joinery is gonna hide those clean cuts really well. And of course, we're going to glue the joints as well for a nice, strong joint. The outer dimensions of the top is gonna be 24 inches by 25 and a half inches. After dry fitting the lid, I just wasn't happy with the look. So I added some inch and a half by 23 inch strips with a half inch reveal to give it kind of a stepped look. This not only made it more pleasing to the eye, but it also added some thickness and rigidity to the lid. It also gave me a great place to mount the LED strips underneath.
So this project had a metal element, a wood element, and a fire element. I wanted to add a concrete element in there somehow. So that's when I came up for the idea for a concrete inlay on the top. This is the most exciting part. You have absolutely no idea at this point if it turned out really, really good or really, really bad. Really, really good. I struggled for weeks to come up with an idea for the design or logo to go on the top and in the front of this project. Then the idea finally came to me to merge my logo with Rick's EasyFirePits.com logo to kind of celebrate this great marriage between my channel and his company through these awesome collaborations. And kind of a symbol that his company is going to be a reoccurring and permanent fixture in this channel. If you're interested in seeing how I made this, there will be a link up above for two videos. The first video will be how to make a bench with a concrete inlay. Also, there will be a link to my video how to make a concrete fire table that will show you how to do this embossment. With some construction adhesive, I'm just gonna simply glue and screw a three quarter inch piece of plywood on our lid to accept our concrete insert. I'm also going to just simply glue our concrete insert on with uh, some construction adhesive. I went with some simple two and a half inch mortise hinges with a oil rub bronze finish for the lid. I mortised out the top of the cabinet and the bottom of the lid real quick with a three quarter inch chisel and screwed the lid in place and attached a small chain to hold it in the open position. This lid is way heavier than I had anticipated, but that's what I get for doing a concrete insert. In order to superimpose the design on the corrugated metal panel, I printed off the design on a sheet of paper and cut it out. I sprayed the back with some low tack spray adhesive. Then I simply sprayed the design with whatever spray paint I had laying around. Cutting out this small design, there wasn't much I was able to get accomplished with this 4 inch grinder, but I got the majority of it done with a Dremel and kind of a combination of bits, uh, small sanding bits and this tungsten grinding bit that's made for cutting and grinding metal, so I was able to get into those smaller parts. I'm also using some uh, really small fine files to get into these hard to reach areas. Now for the fun part, the fire aspect of this project. The tiki torches. But before we get started on the tiki torches, we have to work on the delivery aspect of this project. We're gonna start on that by drilling a one inch hole with a spade drill for the valve.
Then we have to drill a hole on each side of the project for the hoses that go out to the Tiki torches. Now we could just simply drill a hole through the side, feed the hose through, and then connect straight to the valve, but I'm not comfortable with that. I want a hard connection on the side. So we're gonna drill an 11 16 hole with a spade drill on the side, feed this 3 8 by two inch pipe nipple. Then it's gonna have a, a 3 8 flare cupping on each side and then connect to the hose, then go straight out to the Tiki torches. All right, now let's turn our attention to the inside. This is gonna look complicated at first, but it's very simple. The torches on either side of the cabinet are gonna be attached by two hoses that will be attached by a 3 8 compression tee. We will then run a short hose from the compression tee to the on-off valve. Then from the on-off valve, we're gonna run another short line that's going to attach itself to the regulator, which then will attach itself to the propane tank. The beauty about the inside of the cabinet is that since everything is a compression fitting, we're not gonna have to use the Teflon tape, which is a big pain in the butt. Just make sure that everything is clean and tight and we're laughing. Then we just simply attach the long hoses to the outside on either side of the cabinet that go straight out to the tiki torches. Again, no Teflon tape on these guys because they're compression fittings. The torch couldn't be easier. We're gonna start with the burner. Then we're gonna thread on one of the washers on the burner. Put it inside the burner can. I'm gonna put the assembly in the bowl. I'm going to thread another washer on. And tighten that up real good. Then I'm gonna wrap the end in some Teflon tape. Then thread my secondary on off valve. and then make sure that's tight. I'm gonna put my bowl assembly aside, grab my tiki pole, wrap this end with Teflon tape. Then thread on my bowl assembly. Now on the bottom end, I'm gonna work on my spike assembly. <laughs> Rick could not have labeled these spikes better. He, he wrapped it like five times and about three notes telling me that these spikes are sharp. But you know what? Stabbed myself anyway. I'm just gonna wrap the end of the pole in Teflon tape. It's not necessary to wrap the spike in Teflon tape. Then I'm gonna thread on this custom 90 degree uh, compression fitting. Make sure you thread this on correctly because one end goes to the spike, which doesn't receive gas. Make sure the right angle actually goes to the propane rod. Thread the spike on the end. Don't poke yourself. And our Tiki torch assembly is done. Now we just gotta attach our hose onto the Tiki torch and we're ready to burn. Now I'm just going to string these LED strips around the perimeter underneath the lid. Then we're gonna to try to come back around and come down to our cutout. There will be a link in the description down below for where I got these. Cool thing about these LED strips is that uh, they are battery powered, so that making the unit more mobile. So dealing with these corners and trying to bend the light strip around these corners has been a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. I actually ended up tearing some corners, which has rendered sections of the light strip inoperable. And I'm also short about a foot over here where I want to be. So I uh, looked online and I got this kit that has a bunch of connectors and extensions and even corner pieces that is going to make 
my life a lot easier dealing with this lighting system, so. Double-sided mounting tape for the battery packs and the self-adhesive LED strips made for a pretty simple installation. But just to be on the safe side, I added a small bead of Starbond CA glue with some accelerator just for a little added insurance. By the way, Starbond just came out with a, a brown CA glue, a uh, link down below for a discount as well. I made some quick frosted glass by sanding down some cheap plexiglass with 80 grit sandpaper and glued it up with my special construction adhesive that I pretty much put on everything. So during the design process, I, for the most part, knew how I wanted to construct all the different aspects of this project, except for how I was going to attach the torches to the back. I had absolutely no idea what I was gonna do. Waited till pretty much the last minute to figure that one out. But I had to figure out a way to hang these torches easily and quickly and not have it look like ass. My, my mind kept going towards PVC pipe and I, I just, I, that would make it look way too wonky and just would not fit the theme at all. So if you wanna make something outside of the box, you talk to somebody that owns farm animals. So I asked my very good friend, Brandy from the Brighton Home Depot and he immediately came up with this very simple yet awesome idea. He grabbed one of these Simpson strong tie brackets off the shelf. Then he grabs this 3 8 rubber grommet, puts the two together, and he's like, this is what I was thinking for the bottom. <laughs> then he grabs one of these grippy hooky things for like brooms and shovels and says, this would be good for the top. No, thank you, Andy. You actually kind of saved my life. Then I just threw a couple of coat hangers for the hoses, a bottle opener, and... <laughs> I think it's done! Woo! So here's how it works. You roll the cabinet out of storage and place it in the desired location. You then detach the torches, and you can place them as far as 12 feet away from the cabinet. And you can bring them in as tight as you want as well. After you've turned your propane tank on, you turn your on-off valve slightly about an eighth of a turn to start off with. You take a nice long stem lighter and ignite it over the bowl. Then you slowly turn your secondary valve on. Then boom, baby, the torch should ignite. Then you set the mood with this remote for the LED lights. You can make them any color you want and set them to any mood you want. It flashes, it strobes, full RGB. It fades and it's got a, a smooth. Then after the party's over, you turn off all your valves, replace the torches on the back of the cabinet, then roll it back into storage for tomorrow's party. Oh, and even when you're not using the cabinet, you can actually take the cooler out and roll it away and use it for whatever other event you got going on. But it, uh, it claims that it will keep your ice for three days. Uh, I don't believe that for a second. But I'm certainly willing to give it a try. Slanjava.
Not bad. Check this out. It's quite a bit of ice. Very cold still. Let's see if the drain works. <laughs> it works. Good idea, Jordan. And if you think this thing looks good during the day, <laughs> just wait till you see it at night. This is the hour, the darkest place. Dante's in front of the devil's maze. It's a good world. I'm telling you, this, this thing puts off some nice, serious heat. And I, I've got the dial turned, I'm talking like not even like a quarter, uh, an eighth of a way. So this thing can get much hotter. But seriously, how cool would it be to have some torches like this and a really cool roll around cart with some cold brews in it and some LED lights, come on. And they are definitely gonna be the talk of your party, that's for sure. I'm a, I'm actually kind of pissed I gotta give these away. <laughs> I don't, I don't wanna. I kinda wanna keep them. But I'm not, I'm not gonna. We're gonna auction them off. So don't forget, we're gonna be auctioning this off on eBay. There's gonna be a link down below for the eBay page. Now, unfortunately, I am so sorry, but I have to limit this to the US only. The out of country shipping for this was astronomical, and I am not allowed to ship it with the propane tank, so I'm gonna be shipping it with a gift card so you can buy your own brand new propane tank. So, But that's it for this video. If you liked this video and it was worth the wait, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. And I also promise I won't make you wait another three months for the next video. Thank you again to Rick from easyfirepits.com for providing all the hardware in this really cool project and this really great idea. And I will see you in the next video. Hopefully not in another three months.